What's going on guys? John Alder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're going to look at type conversion from user input in Dart. All right guys, like I said in this video, we're going to look at type conversion for user input. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos to teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off memberships on my courses, videos, and books for one time fee, which is insanely cheap. All right, like I said in this video, we're going to look at type conversion for user input. Now, a couple of videos ago, we did user input. So users can enter things, right? And then in the last video, we looked at type conversion, switching from integers to strings and vice versa. In this video, I'm going to put both of those things together because it's not as easy as you might think. You would think that you could just take user input and convert it the way we looked at in the last video, but that's not the case. There's a snafu that we need to talk about, and that's what we're going to look at in this video. So head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor in the Git Bash Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other Dart videos in this series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got our basic Dart starter code. I'm calling an inconvert.dart, short for input convert, I guess. I don't know. And of course, we're going to get user input. So we know the first thing we need to do is import our Dart colon IO for input output. Okay, and then let's just come down here and real quick, let's just print, you know, enter a number, and then we want to get user input. So let's create a variable, I'm just going to call it nummy short for number, I guess. And then we want to stdin dot read line sync, just like we learned two videos ago, check that video out if you didn't see it. And then normally we could print out, you know, just nummy and everything is good. Now, if we wanted to print out nummy plus 10, we're gonna get an error. Let's save this and run it just to make sure. Head over to our terminal in my C dart stuff directory and let's run dart inconvert, inconvert dot dart and we get a couple of different errors here. Now, the first thing is when you're taking user input using this method, it's bringing it in as a string. So right off the bat, we know we're gonna get an error because you can't add 10 to a string. It would make it, you can't actually add that way. So the second problem we're getting is that if we look at this real quick, we've got this string question mark thing again. And remember, whenever we're bringing in user input, it has to not be null. And that's what this string question mark says, it allows it to be null or not. Now you can't add a number to a null, right? Because you know, if something doesn't exist, you can't add 10 to it, because that doesn't make sense. It doesn't exist. It's null. So what we can do is use the double question mark operator, which it's the if null operator. So basically what it does is it runs a little logic. It says, hey, if it's null, change it to something else. And that's what we're gonna do. So let's come up here. First, let's create another variable. And I'm just gonna call this nummy2. And that's gonna equal nummy1 plus 10. But of course, we know we can't do that. So first of all, this is a string. So we learned in the last video, we can convert it with int.parse. And then we can wrap this in like that that will turn it into an integer in theory, then we can add 10, but not really. Because if we save this and run it again, we're going to get this same error, the same string error. Oh, no, we've got now three errors. So oh, did I forget? Yeah, I forgot. All right. We need our semicolon. <laughs> right? So all right, let's clear the screen. Now, okay, we still get one, we get all kinds of errors. But again, that's because we can't convert this because it might be null. So how do we fix this? Again, we use the double question mark operator, and then we tell it, hey, if it is null, change it to, I don't know, zero. Or you could just leave it to blank, but eh, we're, we're doing numbers here, so let's change it to zero. So if somebody doesn't enter anything into the keyboard, we're gonna assume that's a zero, right? So now this will turn it into something that can be converted into an integer. This will then convert it into an integer, and this will then print it out. So we can come down here and we can say, uh, I don't know, nummy plus 10 equals nummy two. And if this works, it should, you know, work. <laughs> all right, so let's run this guy again. Uh oh, all the errors this morning. All right, so oh, num two, nummy two. There we go. Whew, I tell you, it's Thursday. Okay, enter number 41. 41 plus 10 equals 51, and it works. Let's try it again, just to make sure, right? Let's say 100, 100 plus 10 equals 110, and we're good to go. So again, just remember when you're taking in user input, it has to account for 
nullability, right? Because the user might not enter anything. It might be null. So that's why we use this question mark if null operator. Basically, it's sort of shorthand for logic in this little parentheses right here. It's basically saying, hey, if this is null, change it to that, right? Or I suppose you could do it like that too, right? If it is null, it'll change it to zero. If it's not null, it'll just keep it what it is. In our case, whatever the user entered, if they entered in a number, 41, for instance, it'll keep it at 41. Then this will parse it into an integer to which we can then add 10. So a little complicated, not too bad. And that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off membership. So it's access to all my courses, over 50 courses, thousands of videos and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students to learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.